Hello, hello, hello. How are you? Hello, good evening. Good evening. It's a pleasure hello, to good you. Evening, good evening. Welcome back to a new class. Hello, Irving, Sofia, and Rafa and Yolanda. It's a pleasure to see you again, eh? Uh, here is raining Rain where I live. I don't know if it is raining there where you live. Yes, right now it's raining. Okay, very good. Here in Aguachapan, no. Ah, you live in Aguachapan, Yolanda. I didn't know. Oh. <laughs> Sophia. Yes, yes. So, so, who lives in Aguachapan? Sophia, too. Yes, I'm from Aguachapan. Ah, okay, and Yolanda. Where are you from, Yolanda? Uh, I am from Santa Tecla. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, I remember. Yes, yeah, Sofia is from Japan. Yolanda from Santa Tecla. Irving is from San Salvador, Irving. From Ciudad del Gado. Ciudad del Gado. So we're close because I live in Mexicano, right? And Rafa in Santa Tecla too, I remember. Nuevo Cuscatlán. Nuevo Cuscatlán, yes. <laughs> well, that's on the road to Santa Tecla. <laughs> okay, good. So that's it, right? So let's start with the class. Uh, we are going to watch the video again. Remember, uh, yesterday we were talking about noun phrases that include uh, relative clauses, right? So we are going to continue with the same uh, topic, right? <clears throat> noun phrases contain, containing relative clauses. First as subjects and then as objects, right? Okay, let's watch the video again. Then we're going to discuss it. Try to give as many responses as possible. We can try to work towards traveling to other countries. You'll learn how to use noun phrases to do this. Give me a second here from the beginning. Yes. Hi, okay. everyone. At the end of this class, you'll be able to express your feelings towards traveling to other countries. You'll learn how to use noun phrases to do this. So let's get started by me asking you a few questions, which you should be able to answer with no problems at all by the end of this class. When traveling to another country, you should be careful about being far away from your family. Would you feel insecure? By the end of this class, you'll be able to use noun phrases which contain relative clauses in order to express your ideas when it comes to traveling. So let me present this structure at this particular moment. What we're going to try to do is we'll try to make sense of this noun phrase which contain relative clauses. Uh, first, we'll start talking a little bit about how we use this as a subject. Then we'll move into the object, probably the object. I'll separate this into a different like So uh, in order to form this kind of uh, expressions, first we're going to have a subject. So in this case, the subject becomes one thing. Uh, then this is followed by a relative clause of time, really this. And then we have the uh, verb to be, in this case, sometimes we see the verb to be. Let's write that specific sentence down. Uh, sorry for the interruption, but here we have an electrical uh, storm, right? So if the if you lose if you lose the teacher, don't worry. Wait for me, and I will come back, right? Because probably we can have a blackout. Uh, probably, I hope not. Okay. But if there is a blackout, so wait for me, eh? don't go. <laughs> okay, let's continue with the class, sorry. All right, so as I mentioned, uh, one, thing, one thing becomes the subject of the sentence. The volume is very low. See the difference between what's a verb, what's a, what's a, what's a subject, what's a relative clause, what's a verb, what's the object. Mm -hmm. Then this is followed by the relative clause. Remember, this is blue, so you can see what, what I'm referring to as a relative clause. And then the verb to be. Now, the verb to be is to match with the subject. 
subject uh, would be plural, then this should change to mom. Okay. Um, and then it's followed by the object of So in this case, my mom's cooking. What we're going to do right now is we're going to include a lot of uh, relative clauses. Uh, so that you can see that uh, this topic can, can, can become a little bit confusing, but if we understand uh, this structure, it, it shouldn't be difficult to so let me include um, lots of relative clauses, right? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to make sense of it, but we're gonna try to uh, make differences. So uh, I mentioned one thing. Uh, you could you could express this idea by saying something, right? Uh, you could also say two people, or you can say two things, or you can say of these things that I missed would be what they are. Um, but uh, let's try to make sense of it here. Um, so one thing I really miss is my mom's cooking. So if I've included um, a few relative classes, let me need you to answer this by me asking you questions. What would you be nervous about when traveling to another country? What would you be anxious about? What would you be comfortable with? What would you be curious about? What would you be enthusiastic about? What would you be fascinated about? Um, let's say that we choose the country, uh, maybe France, right? So France seems like a very touristic place. And I think that a lot of people would like to travel to this particular country. So let's do that second one. One thing I'd be nervous about is, maybe for me, is getting lost. Notice that we have one thing is the noun that the relative clauses are be nervous about. And this is followed by the verb to be. And then this will be followed by the object of the sentence. So for me, one thing I really be nervous about, or one thing I'm nervous about is getting lost. One thing I'll be anxious about is getting to know this new city. One thing I'd be comfortable with is the weather. One thing I'd be curious about is learning about the country's culture. One thing I'd be enthusiastic about is learning the new language. One thing I'd be fascinated by is getting to know the history behind the architecture in that particular city. And so you get the idea. Um, so if we follow this pattern, subject plus relative clause plus verb to be plus the object, but then we shouldn't uh, have any difficulties expressing this idea. So, uh, just one last thing that I would like to mention that if I change the subject to plural, okay, I will need to change the verb to be and I will also need to change the object because both things need to be they need to match with whatever the subject is. For example, the things I really miss are my mom's cooking and my room. That's just to give you an example. If the subject changes to something plural, then you would need to do the same for it. So what I would like for you to do now is to practice this concept now answer this in your own way. So what would you be nervous about? What would you be anxious about? What would you be comfortable with? And try to give as many responses as possible. Can you try to write this idea down that this will help you learn this concept? Okay, class, we were discussing this yesterday, right? Remember the topic is non-phrases, right? And non-phrases contain a noun, the non-necessary it's uh, the table, the cat, you know, an apple. No, no, it's non phrase could be could include other things, right? And then we have relative clauses. Uh, relative, the word relative means that you have a relation, you know, a, a connection between uh, something, one thing here and the other thing over here, right? Two things together, right? So we make, we make this relation. That's what we said, relative close. There is a relation, like a family, for example, right? Your brother and your sister, your mother, 
the mother and the son, you know, there is a relation. So we say relative. They are, well, in fact, family members is a relative, right? My relatives is my family members, you know? My relatives live in El Salvador, for example, right? Well, my family members live in, in, in El Salvador, the same. So the word relative means that they are connected. Okay, but this relative closest, oh, sorry, I forgot to tell you that the closest contain an individual subject, right? And an individual verb, right? It could be an, a model or an auxiliar too, but mainly a subject and a verb that are independent. So this is the relative close. And uh, sometimes this relative close could be uh, a subject, right? Or it could be an object, right? Depending on the position of the verb to be, right? Depending, remember this, depending on the position of the verb to be. Huh? If it is before, a subject. If it is after the verb to be, it's an object, right? But uh, I want to ask you something, class. Do you understand the concept of subject and object? Hello? Hello? Se fue la luz. Sí, cabrón. Sí, le dije que me esperaran. Well, the teacher is back. <laughs> yes. It's so dark, your room teacher. <laughs> We can hear you. Your microphone. Okay, hello. Sorry for the blackout. It was a blackout, as I told you. <laughs> In Mexicanos, it's always the same. When, when it's raining, a blackout, you know, and that's a problem. Right now, right now uh, the, I don't have internet in my house, but I have my, my telephone, so I'm using my telephone, right? Okay, but I repeat, if something wrong happened, wait for me. The one way or the other, I'm coming back, right? <laughs> okay, so I was telling, uh, I was asking you the question. Do you understand the difference between subject and object? Because this is something basic for the topic, right? Yes? Do you, do, you want me yes. To, do you want me to explain? Yeah? Mm, the relative close. No, 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 wait. Uh, but, uh, is a... Uh, Sorry, give me a second, Yolanda. Uh, who's speaking? Yolanda, Sophia. right? No, Sofia. Sofia, sorry. Uh, Sofia, uh, before to go to the relative closest, this is something basic. I'm asking you too. Do you understand the difference between subject and object? Subject and object. Uh -huh. Do you understand the difference? I, I guess. Okay. In this case, in relative close, yes. Yes, okay. Because uh, the relative close is in the end when it's an object and in the beginning when uh, it's a... Yeah, a yeah you, you basically okay. understand it. The subject. <laughs> yeah, excellent. But, excellent, yes. But change change the relative but but i don't understand what or why use the relative close when i talking i don't understand that or por qué lo usa ah okay good i will i will tell you right teacher let me see yes tell me i think the subject is the the word of the uh, you told about that the subject and the object is uh, that you say is something about the object no okay so uh, let's start with sophia we'll explain this okay uh what's the name of your mother sophia
Sofia? She's gone. He's not here right now. Uh, okay, good. So Yolanda, what's uh -huh. the name of your, what will copy of uh, Yolanda? Uh, my, my father, because I don't have ah, okay, a good. So uh, Carlos. Oh, I did that. Somebody's making that, right? Not me. This is the name of my father, teacher. <laughs> Yolanda loves Carlos. Right? Uh, I don't know. Somebody made these, these, these things in the... But anyway, okay, let me see. Uh, Yolanda loves car. No, I'm gonna do something. I don't know how to erase that. <laughs> well, anyway, so let, let, let's do it like this, right? Uh, Sofia, uh, Yolanda, sorry, loves Carlos, right? So Yolanda is the subject. Yolanda is the doer, the creator of the action, you know? And the action is loves. And the object or the receiver, of the action is Carlos, right? Carlos is the object, you know? Mm -hmm. And we can see this, uh, if we change this into, into a, a subject and object pronoun, for example, we can say, she loves, I really, ah, oh, okay, thank you. I don't know who's erasing it. She loves okay. kids. Okay, give me a second, okay. She loves him, right? I still have troubles to, to manage this, this board. <laughs> okay, yeah. She loves him, right? Yolanda mm -hmm. loves Carlos, eh, her father, right? So she loves him. The one that makes the action here is she. Right, and the one that receive is the love in this case is him, you know? So it's not correct to say she loves he, right? Or he her loves. loves he, no, I mean, no. Because the first one is a subject pronoun and the other one is an object pronoun. But to find the, to find the object, you have to make the question who or what? So, all the time, you need to make the question who or what. For example, in this case, uh, who is loved by, by Yolanda? Carlos. So the answer for, for who is Carlos, right? But imagine, let's say, for example, right? Uh, Yolanda loves a car, for example. This is just an example. It's an object, right? So what Yolanda loves? A car. So the object of the love of, of uh, Yolanda is a car, you know? For that reason, you answer the question, what? What she loved, right? You know? Other thing that you need to know about uh, object and, and, I mean, subject and object is that you need transitive verbs. The majority of verbs in English are transitive. What does it mean? That you can move the action into an object, right? Uh, some verbs that are not transitive are, for example, go, arrive, for example, right? Those are not transitive. For example, you can say, uh, I don't say, I go you. No, right? I arrive, I arrive him. <laughs> you cannot say that, right? So go and arrive are no transitive, right? For that reason, those verbs don't have an object, you know? But love, like, make, take, you know? And the majority of the verbs are transitive. So they have an, a, an object, right? Okay, good. So explaining what is, uh, explaining what is subject and object, we're, uh, we're going to see the uh, PowerPoint presentation. Uh, to understand this very well. And let me see. Here, right? Can you see it? Can you see yes. the presentation? Uh -huh. 
Yes, okay, good. So uh, the last class we were learning about this vocabulary, right? Anxious, confident, curious, depressed, enthusiastic, fascinated, homesick, insecure, and uncertain, right? Okay, and now we have these. Noun phrases containing relative clauses, right? Here, as a, a subject, and on the right, as objects, right? Uh, Sofia is back. Sofia? Okay. Hello. Oh, okay, good, you're back. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I will explain very well the, the exact meaning of subject and object, right? So. Here, something, right, it represent a noun phrase, right? After the, this noun phrase, we have a relative clause, a clause with I, that is an independent uh, uh, noun, right, or pronoun in this case, and B, that is an independent verb, right? Notice that we have B, and after that, we have is. So you say, ah, uh, two verbs? No, the reason is, as I told you, that we include, we insert a clause that contains an individual noun or pronoun and an individual verb. In this case, it's I and B, right? Okay, in the other case, it's I and Miss, right? So you can see it's an individual subject and individual uh, verb. So we have the noun phrase, the relative clause, and then we have the object, you know? Okay? So, in this case, the local food, right? But the known phrase in this case is the subject of the, the full sentence, you know? One, something, one thing, the people, in this case, right? They represent a known phrase and they are in the position of a subject. Why can I say that, class? Because notice they are before the verb to be. In the case of something, you know, it's before, and the relative clause are before the verb to be, is. One thing I really miss, right, are before is, and the people I miss the most are before are, you know? That's why we can say that these are the subject, right? Okay. Here we're going to make some similar sentences, right? For you to practice. Good. We are going to make sentence number two, four, seven, and nine. I repeat, two, four, five, seven, and nine, right? Okay. And up here we have many topics. My friends, my family, getting sick, trying new foods, feeling like an, an outsider, making new friends, being away from home, etc., etc. right? Many things, right? So you can use one of those things to express uh, the idea. Let's go to number two, right? The thing. Here, the thing is the, the noun phrase. I probably be most excited about is the relative close. Right? So what we need here is to put one of the things here, right? We're going to start with uh, Rafael. Sorry, Rafael, to, to begin with you, but you're always first in the in the class. That's why you appear first in my in my screen, you know? <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. Rafa. Uh, would you like to complement number two, please? The thing? The thing I probably be most excited about let me see don't tell me getting sick right <laughs> <laughs> um Is trying new food. Trying new food. Okay, good. Yes. Nice. Good. Then, Irving, are you there, Irving? Yes, teacher. Okay, Irving. Number four, please. 
two things. Two things I'd be homesick for are. And sorry, sorry, Irvin. Here you can choose two because it's plural, right? Yeah. Okay, please. Uh, let's see, being away from home and mm -hmm. the feeling like an outsider. Okay, that's it, right? Outside is that you live in another country, right? Nice, Irvin. Nice. Mauricio, can you help me with number five, please? Something, um, something I, I will get depressed about is something I, I will get depressed about is uh, is a uh, illness or a sick. Uh, or getting sick, right? Here. Getting sick. Yeah. Getting sick. Good. Thank you. Thank you, Mauricio. Uh -huh. Something you would or you would get depressed about is getting sick. Nice. Now we have uh, Sophia, please. Number seven. Number what, teacher? Number seven, please. Seven. Uh, the thing I feel most uncomfortable about would be not understanding people. Not understanding people. Okay. Nice. <laughs> nice. Uh, I, for a moment, <laughs> I thought you would say not understanding the teacher. <laughs> okay, sorry. And then we have uh, Yolanda, please. Tell me, Yolanda, with the last one, number nine, please. One thing I'd be insecure about is getting lost in a new city. Okay. Uh, that, sorry, that's, that was number nine, right? Number nine, right, Yolanda? Sorry. Yes, I... one thing. Uh -huh. Uh -huh, yes, yes, sorry, sorry, excuse me. I didn't listen very well, excuse me. Okay, that's it. Very good, thank you. Uh, clean for everybody. Okay, good. Later, we're going to thank see the you. answer. We're going to see the answer, right? But now we're going to change the, in my time, you know, in the 70s, in the 80s, we say change the cassette, right? <laughs> Now we're going to see the relative clauses as objects, right? Here we have some example, but we're going to come back to the, to the PPT presentation. Now we're going to see the second video, right? Okay. Sorry again for the, for the audio, but try to, to see the, the, the part where, where they write. Right? Okay. Let me see. Let's watch the second video. Come on. Oh, um, Will sorry. Hi, everyone. By the end of this class, you'll be able to express your feelings towards traveling to other countries. You'll learn how to use noun phrases to do this. In our previous class, we learned how to express these ideas. And what we focused on learning was how to express the, like, these ideas and using the noun phrases as the subject of our sentence. What we're going to do today is we're going to focus on the right side of this chart, and we're going to learn how to use the noun phrases as the object of our sentence. So if you recall our previous lesson, we learned one thing I really miss is my mom's cooking. And we learned this sort of formula here subject plus relative clause plus the verb be and then the object uh, that, that's the activity what we're going to do with this lesson is we're going to borrow this object and we're going to turn that into the subject of our sentence um, so i'm what i'm going to do is i'm going to keep one of those ideas there so you can see exactly what happens whenever we make that particular change what we want to do is we want to change this statement one thing i really miss is my mom's cooking into my mom's cooking is one thing that I really miss. By the way, it's important to mention, and I think I did not mention this in our previous lesson, that what you see in parentheses is optional. That means that you can either use it or you know, exclude it from your sentence. So one thing that I really miss is my mom's cooking, that's correct. But also if you just say one thing I really miss is my mom's cooking, either one of those two sentences is correct. 
let me write this structure down so you can see what's going to happen whenever we make this change. As I mentioned previously, what we want to do is we want to change this noun phrase that is being used as the subject. That means that the noun phrase, one thing I really miss is the subject of our sentence. Uh, and basically what we want to do is we want to change that into being the object of our sentence, as you can see here in our next example. So um, the structure is the following. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to have, uh, we're going to change my mom's cooking into that being the subject of our sentence, all right? So let me go ahead and write that down. Say my, my mom's cooking. That becomes the subject of our sentence now, right? But what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm just going to make sure that um, uh, this is quite clear. So I'm going to uh, put in those spaces here. So uh, I'm also going to go ahead and change that color to make sure that we um, see what's happening, right? So that's in green. The subject is in green. So I'm, I'm changing my mom's cooking, which was the object of our previous sentence, to that being the subject of our sentence now. Now, notice that. The verb to be also changes in location and the verb to be follows the subject. So my mom's cooking, it's, that's the verb to be, is, let me change the color there as well. There we go. Uh, then this follows the noun phrase, right? So what do I mean by the noun phrase? Uh, well, uh, uh, previously it was the subject of her sentence and also that would follow the relative clause. So literally, this is what I'm going to put here. I separated it so that you could see actually what happened there. Right? The, the noun, um, I think I colored that differently. So let me make sure that everything matches here. Um, and that's basically what happened. Just a couple of things changed. Number one, we had to change the object of our previous sentence to that be the subject of our new sentence. So my mom's cooking. Uh, and then that followed the verb to be. So the verb to be follows the subject. My mom's cooking is one thing I really miss. If we look at our previous examples, the ones that we did in our previous lesson, uh, in which we said, one thing I'm nervous about is getting lost. So let's say that I wanted to change this idea and I wanted to use this uh, noun phrase, but now being used as the object, right? Uh, and uh, so let me write that idea down. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna change this, uh, this activity getting lost, which in our previous sentence was the object of our sentence. So we're gonna change it to the subject. So for example, we'll say, getting lost, that's, that's, uh, that becomes the subject of her sentence, okay? That follows the verb to be, is, and then um, that will follow uh, the noun phrase, all right? So we're gonna say is one thing, okay? and then that follows the relative class of the um, nervous, about, all right? Uh, very important, I want you to notice what happens with this preposition. This preposition uh, will typically go at the very end, as you can see, so I wanna emphasize this real quick. Um, and what I'd like you to do is to use uh, the same ideas that you wrote down in the previous class, but change the order of it. The goal is to practice. As you can see, um, we, we have the same ideas here in the example. Something not be nervous about is making new friends. What we do is we change the order of this and we say making new friends is something I'd be nervous about or making new friends is something that I would be nervous about. Um, two people I email every day are my parents. My parents are two people I would email every day. So what I would like for you to do is to practice making the previous sentences to those being used as the object of your sentence, sort of like the example that you see here. Okay, that's it. Right now we have the picture, right? We have uh, 
the relative clauses as subjects and the relative clauses as objects, right? But to uh, com complement the explanation of the video, right? We're going to, to go to the PowerPoint presentation again. Yeah, I guess that's the one. And let me see here, right? Yeah. Uh, yes. Okay, good. That's it, right? Now going back. Now we have the general picture, right? I will explain detail by detail. Uh, give me a second. Okay, something that remember that or oh, who is an option, but you can use it or not if you want. <coughs> Sorry. Okay. Then we have uh, the relative close, right? Right. And notice that this is the clue. Listen. Notice that the 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 beginning right of the of the sentence right uh contains something and i would be worried about that this is relative close and this relative close is before the verb to be you know before the verb to be that's the reason we can say that this relative close is the 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 subject now let's go back to the other example the local fool notice that the local fool as an object return in the sentence now like a subject you know then and, and then after that we have is after is all that we have after is is the object right and notice that the object contains something right and contains the relative close so after the verb to be yeah the same happened with the other examples look one thing that i really miss is this is the clue is right all of this is before so for that reason this is the subject and then hanging out with my friends is right then in this case the relative close is not the subject but the object here right the same here we're talking about people here the people who i miss the most or that i miss the most right are before the verb to be the subject right and then after the verb to be we have it like an object, right? Okay, now let's go to the examples. Okay, now we're going to discuss number one, number three, number six, number eight, and number 10, right? I'm gonna start with uh, Dagoberto. Dagoberto, can you give me one example of this is your personal opinion, right? Number one. Uh, yeah, one, yeah. one of those things, Dagoberto, that make, make you feel enthusiastic. No, you know, like my, uh, your friends, your family. Um, what? I'm Making not, your I friends, etc. Et right? Huh? Okay, Dago. Learning, a, learning about a different culture is something I be very enthusiastic about. Excellent. My goodness. Excellent also, right? Good. Nice. So in this case, learning about different a different culture, like Dagoberto say, no, is before the verb to be. So for that reason, this part is now not the object, but the subject. And then we have the verb to be. And what is the object? The object is something I would be, I'd be very enthusiastic about. So the relative closes here goes into the position of object, right? Okay, okay. Now let's go to number three. Uh, Yolanda, please help me, Yolanda. Number three. Being away from home is something I really miss. Excellent. Very good. Thank you. And Sophia, please, number six. Is 
Is Sophia in the class? No. Yes, okay, good. Getting sick is one thing that I might be embarrassed about. That's it, right? Maybe. Embarrassed. Nice. And number eight. Uh, let me see. Mauricio, help me with number eight, Mauricio. Mauricio, you're thinking, right? This is very difficult, eh? <laughs> this is very difficult because I cannot find it. Uh, yeah. Ah, yes, my friends, my family eh? are two examples, yes. Um, or, you, or you can what invent. If, what number? Number eight. No, number eight, yes. Or you can number invent. Eight. You can say my wife, my children, my... Number eight. I don't know, my... My well, dog. Uh, <laughs> Come on. No, well, I can say my family are the people who are who I will miss the most. My family. Oh, okay. Excellent. Excellent. Also, right? <laughs> okay. Thank you, Mauricio. And number ten, right? Uh, Evan, please. Yes, teacher. Tell me the example uh... of number ten. Very lost in things. a new city and uh, being away from home are two things I'd be anxious about. Perfect, right? What can I say? Perfect, right? Class, you understand the topic very well, right? But mm -hmm. even though if you have any extra question, tell me. Any extra question? Yolanda? No? No, okay. Excellent, right? Good. Uh, I would I really like to, to have the other students in, in, in the class, but, but I don't know what happened. Maybe, uh, you know, like Daniel, Francisco, Elvis, Carlos, Fernando, Noemi, Chris, et cetera, et cetera. I don't know what happened, why they don't connect, but uh, I hope they're working in the platform, right? Uh, by the way, remember tomorrow we are going to work just in the final test, right? The final test, because mm -hmm. they they closed. I, I imagine you're working now in that, but uh, you're supposed to finish this before midnight tomorrow, right? And remember, um, I'm going to be always there in the WhatsApp group. If you have questions, no problem, right? You can ask me to my number or uh, to the group, right? Okay, now, let me see. Um, we're going to make some exercises, right? What is your, num what is your number? Uh, uh, it's in the chair. group, but uh, you can copy it. Seven, seven, uh -huh. four, five. Four, five. Seven, seven. Seven, seven. Five, two. Five, two. Nicolas okay. Cage. No, sorry, it's Javier Gomez. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yes. Yeah. Seven, seven, no, I, have, I have problem with the, I, I will have problem with it in this in the section five. In I, section five. This, okay, good. With this, uh -huh, with this uh, especially with this uh, 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 object and with the subject. Oh, good. Where, so, is, the, where is the face or where is the, when we have to to put in order the the words? Well, and I, I have some. I I, I have. Uh, the, of the tree, I have two bad, and so. Ah, okay. We're going to take it. Let me okay. see. If we have time, we can make it to the. No, we don't have too much time. Well, but if you want after this exercise, it's going to be very clear for you. But we're going to go directly. No, no problem. We're going. Okay. After this exercise, we're going to go directly, and we're going to make it. I, of course, I cannot give you the answer, but I can give you just some hints. You know, some mm -hmm. hints, some small ideas you can use to to give the solution for the problem. But, but okay. Let's go here, right? Uh, Yolanda, help me, please. Would you like to read the, the introduction here at the beginning of this part, please? Yolanda, are you there? No. 
No, no. Well, uh, so, uh, Dagoberto, please help me, Dagoberto. The relative pronoun, uh -huh, this part. Okay, okay. The relative pronoun who or that can be left out in noun phrases as subject and a subject. These four sentences have exactly the same meaning. One thing, I, I be nervous about is getting lost. One thing that I be nervous about is getting lost. Getting lost is one thing I be nervous about. Getting lost is one thing that I be nervous about. Okay, thank you, Dagoberto. So the first sentence I, is not using that, right? And the relative, uh, um, well, the relative pronoun here, the, the relative clause, sorry, it's a subject, right? In the second two sentences, because we have four sentences, right? Uh, the relative uh, clause is an object. And in one, we use that. And in the other, we use, we don't use that, right? The four sentences have the same meaning. In other words, to express one idea, you can use uh, the relative pronouns, uh, relative uh, clauses, sorry, as subjects or the relative uh, clauses as subjects. It's the same. I mean, no problem. Here is just one way to communicate one idea, right? But both ways are correct. Look at the example here. If you want to live in a foreign country, you know, Mexico, United States, Australia, et cetera, et cetera, who would you miss a lot? Uh, it's a person, right? And who is this person? My best friend, right? One person I miss a lot is my best friend. So in here, the, the relative close is the subject because it's before is. Then we change and say, my best friend is one person I miss a lot. So again, it's the same idea, but the relative close is an object. It's after the verb is, right? So we're gonna do the same in number two, but in this case, I'm gonna ask for volunteers. What would you be very interested in? I'm going to try. Sorry? Me, Sophia. Sophia, come on, do it, do it, Sophia. Um, the first is two things. One thing. Uh, uh, oh, no, no, two things, uh, yes, 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 yes. Sorry, sorry. Two things. Two things I be I very interested. Mm -hmm. I could be I could be very interested. Interested in? Uh -huh. Interested in the food and music. Are, are? Are, are food and music. The food and music. Now? Change, please. Change the, the cassette. Food, <laughs> <laughs> the food and music are two things I'd be inter inter interested very interested in right we we need to use the, in. the, the position yes. <laughs> nice very good very nice uh, okay good let's continue right I, I read the message I read a message over there, but we, then let's continue, right? Number three, volunteers, please. Number three. Don't be nervous. You can do it. <laughs> One volunteer, please. Me, teacher. Uh, Yolanda. Okay. Thank you, Yolanda. Okay. Something I uh, be worried about uh, is not understanding the customs. Ah, okay. Not understanding the custom uh, is 
something uh, is uh, some is something i'd be worried about very about. good very good and number four to finish we're not going to make number five because of the time number four please another volunteer well i okay mauricio come on do it uh, How will you stay in touch with people, my brother and sister? Um, in this case, two two people, right? Yeah, uh, people uh, with my no, with two two people, huh? two two people, two people, uh, two people. I um, two people are are in touch. Are in touch I, with I stay in touch with uh -huh. two people. I stay I stay I stay in touch with with two people. No, I will stay with R. I will stay. I will stay in touch with R. We are we. With our my brother, uh, with our my with with my brother and sister. Very good. So again, let's let's go back. Right, two people. I would I stay in touch with are my brother and sister. Right, two people. I stay two, two people in touch are, with are two people are stay two people are stay in touch with are with our brother and sister. Good. That's it. Right. Two people I stay in touch with are my brother and sister. Now, change the cassette, Mauricio. Um, my brother and sister, my brother and sister are are stay in touch with. Are two our, people? Are two people? Are two? Ah, uh, are two people? My brother and sister uh, are, are two stay people? in touch with our. Okay, my brother and sister are two people I stay in touch with, right? I stay in touch with. Very good. Thank you. Now we're going to see the answers. Oh, well, difficult. That. Oh, yes. <laughs> of course, it's very difficult, Mauricio, but you did it. Congratulations. Now, notice here, these are examples, right? You can change it. This is the sentence number four. Look, Mauricio, two uh -huh. people that or who that. you can use this or not right i touch with I are my brother and sister are my brother then and sister. we change the cassette my brother and sister are two people who i stay in touch with right if you want i can send this powerpoint presentation to the whatsapp group so you can download it and practice in your house right or you can watch the the video in youtube as, as you want right Wait, no. wait, 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 wait. I will. I will. Ah, okay, do it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Now let's let's go to the platform. Okay. Let's go to the platform and let's go to the exercise we are interested in, right? Okay, here, right? Number yeah. one. One thing I would be excited by. One thing I will be excited okay, by. Excited okay, by. here I have a question for you. It's this is subject or object? One Remember thing, the structure, right? One thing I will be it's subject. It's subject, correct? It's subject, right? Yes, so I will change some names in order to not change, not do not give you the answer because I cannot give you the answer. But I will change some some instead of say the look is is uh, uh, trying pupusas, right? I will change, right? One thing I will be excited by is trying pupusas, right? So what I'm going to do here is to copy that, right? Uh, I I cannot copy <laughs> the answer. I repeat, but yeah, no, I, uh -huh. 
But he said, one right. thing I would be excited by is, because remember, it's one thing, right? So you're going to copy is, right? The mm -hmm. first thing is is, right? And then is? Is trying the local food. Is trying the local food. But you say that, not me, right? <laughs> okay, that is the answer. That is the answer, right? Okay, then let's go to number two. Uh, is meaning people say so here we have would be the most curious about so what you're going to do basically is to put this thing in order right okay uh, and then again this part is um, how can I say this part is the is the subject right but you want to put in order what I want you, the same, the, the same, the last one, right? But I want you to check, especially Mauricio, look, I want you to check the structure. Let me, let me show you this. Let me show you this. Okay, here, right? The structure is subject. It could be to people, something, two things, uh, et cetera, et cetera, right? Then we have mm -hmm. the, the relative clause. The relative mm -hmm. clause contains I, I would. I would really, uh -huh, I would. I, will I would that. miss. I would be. I would need. I would, et cetera, et cetera. So this is the relative clause, right? And then we have is, if it is singular. And mm -hmm. we have, uh, let me play it for you. Give me a second. Let me play it for you. Uh, because I want you to see, okay. right? And then we'll move into the object. As I mentioned, uh, one. Okay, yes, here, right? Yes, good. So, uh, sorry, it's confusing here. Mm -hmm. Give me a second, I will change. Yes, yes, that's it, right? Subject, relative close, verb to be, object. Let's say, for example, here, one thing is the subject. So, I uh, would miss, uh, let's eliminate really, but really is not important. I miss is the relative close. The verb to be is, is and the object is my mom's cookie, right? Mom's cookie. Here in the second one, something is the subject. I be nervous, right? Is the relative close, mm -hmm. right? The verb to be is, is, and the object is making new friends, right? And here, two people is the subject. I email, email is the verb, right? In the relative clause. And then the verb to be is R and my parents is the object, right? Now with this, go back to the exercise. And then you have to put it, this in order, right? Here, one thing, let me see if I, one thing is the, is the subject, right? One thing is the subject. Uh -huh. I would be I will, excited be. by is the relative close, yeah. right? Yeah. Then you have to the put the verb to be. The verb That's why is, I say is, right? Yeah, is local. Here, local, the trying food. So you have to put this in order, right? Uh huh. Uh, what is the answer for you? I will copy your answer. Not my answer, remember, right? Is. Trying um, the local uh, food. He's trying the local food. He's trying the pupusas. <laughs> uh -huh. I'm sorry that, <laughs> but that is the answer, right? It's trying the, well, you know the answer, right? So yeah. what you're going um, to do is to put this. I have in, problem, teacher, in uh -huh. the number two. In the number two. In okay. the other one. Yeah. In the other ones, I do. Number one is okay. Well, number one is okay. It's Finish, okay. Right? Number three. Okay. Number but two. The number two is... I can okay. order. Put it on. Here, for example, I will help you. The thing. Thing I would. Oops, sorry. The thing I the would thing... be. The thing I would. Uh, here, you don't I... say that. Mm, it's not there in the sentence. That, but. Normally I can copy that, but no, it's not there, right? 
the thing, and then I have the relative clause. The relative clause is the subject, the apostrophe, right? Or in this case, it's not apostrophe. Look, we have wood, right? Look. Will be the most curious about. Will be the most curious about. Okay, I will help you more. I will help you more. The thing I would. I would. I would. Uh -huh. And then, what is the verb? What is the verb? Is. What is the verb? Be. Be. Be, right? Be. Would be, right? Now I stop. I cannot give you the answer, right? But the thing I would be. And then you, you answer the rest, right? I'm just curious about the... Understand? Yes. And the people my age, uh-huh. Okay. But I put it the idea and, and check it back. Okay, give me a second. I'm going to do something. I'm going to I see exactly. Why. I'm going to see exactly. Uh, I'm going to see exactly. Oh. Okay, um, sorry, I'm going to do something here. Give me a second, class. I have problems with the projection. Um, yes, one, two, three here, right? Um, sorry, I, yes, here, right? And let me see, are we, mm -hmm. okay, uh, I want to tell you something. The problem is the platform, right? No. No. No, no, no wait, wait. Uh, no, the platform. Wait, Yolanda, wait. Is that sometimes you have to copy part of the sentence, uh, not the full sentence. Do you understand? No, I mean, I'm not saying the platform is the problem. I'm saying that um, that you have to, to copy only one part. Yes? Uh, I don't know if you, if you understand what I mean, right? For example, let's go back to the, let's go back to the exercise. Uh, but I gave, I gave the solution for the, give me a second, I will do something. I will do something. Um, I will do something. Give me a second, please. Ah, I am getting in troubles because the PowerPoint presentation is giving me some problems uh, here. Okay, one, two, three, four, here, right? Um, give me a second. Okay, I got it, I got it. Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for your patience, right? Now, let's share again. Here, right? Uh, yes. Now. Oh, sorry. I have, I'm showing you the answer, right? No, we're going to do something. We're going to do something, class. Sorry. Uh, I don't, I cannot give you the answer. So I'm going to put your ideas in the WhatsApp group. Yes. I'm gonna make two things. Number oh, one, I will send the, the PowerPoint presentation, right? And number two, I will copy uh, not this, not the answer, but almost the answer, right? So you you have an idea how to resolve the problem. And then, if you still have problems, I will answer you personal, right? Okay. Good. So sorry for the. For the problems I always have with the platform, oh, okay. with, the, with the projection, because sometimes I need to to project something, right? And and I have problems with that, right? Sorry. So we're going to do something because it's it's time to finish the class. We want to do it in the WhatsApp group, right? 
but I promise I will help you, right? Okay. Thank okay. You. Good. Okay. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. God bless you. Okay. See you have a good night. For the practice. Yes. See you.